Welcome to the post game show presented by the Maroon Club. Every gift matters every year. Join the Maroon Club today. Frank Devani will uh, chat with us in a moment with John Leone. But first, let's take a look at the highlights with Mike Joseph. Now, there weren't many highlights for Lafayette, but, uh, you know, it's just a tough game to, to kind of find your way. Here's a touchdown pass over the middle. A lot of time for the quarterback to throw. You see Trevor Osborne right there makes a nice play. He made a couple plays tonight. You see two looks at it right there. Really nice throw. And Kanoff was terrific tonight, over 255 yards passing. Dre Nelson right here down the sideline. This is a trick play. Lafayette at this point uh, down the 13 to nothing after the missed extra point right here. But a couple missed tackles late in that first half when Lafayette's defense was on the field for 48 offensive plays by the Lafayette or the Princeton offense. Here's that play that uh, got that 20 to three nothing lead before halftime. Haluba, a look from the backup quarterback, hits it into the end zone, and Lafayette really didn't have an answer in that first ha half at all. They came out in the second half and right down the field on this opening drive you see right there again the backup quarterback out of the zone read look and uh, you know when you give the ball to Atwater and he's as effective as he is you're going to be able to pull it like that and give it back you watch Radigan right here he's going to get down the sideline they showed a couple of different running backs tonight but some very good blocking with some senior offensive linemen up front Lafayette's lone touchdown came with Merriweather out of the backfield right here good delivery we talked about in that second half, Drew Reed 12 for 12, but a positive right here. Gets it out of the backfield. A good uh, acceleration by Merriweather. A good block downfield by Dylan Wadsworth right there. And Merriweather does a nice job to stiff on the last defender to get it into the end zone. Not a lot of positives for Lafayette, but you know what? Things to build on. A lot of young guys playing. Not as many mistakes offensively, but you know what? they got to find a way to put some more points on the board, give that defense a break. John Leone is with the coach. Yeah, thank you, Gary. You know, Frank, uh, we knew going in that the early season schedule did not allow you for a very broad margin for error. You picked a night, as you said, to not play very well at all against a team that looks like they're ready to contend for the Ivy League title. Well, I don't know about that, certainly early on, but uh, they certainly came in and outplayed us totally in every phase. We imploded offensively and defensively as well as special teams. Um, don't have many answers for coming out, the, you know, that flat kind of thing. We, it's good old-fashioned butt kicking, you know. That's what happened, and, and, and these things happen. So, not much you can do. You got to go back, regroup, try to get, regain your pride a little bit. The most the concern I have are just the number of injuries. I, I, I've never in my entire career seen a half of football like that. We lost both safeties, a third safety, uh, several other people. I, I, I'm just at a loss. So, uh, this stuff happened. We were already decimated with injuries. So, we got to go back to the drawing board and pull this thing together, and we have a very physical opponent, Wagner, next week. Yeah, you know, Frank, and I've been doing the sideline thing now for a number of years, and I can't recall coming down to my report and doing so many injuries uh, at one point. And again, I, it's not about excuses. We're not going there at all. Talk to us a little bit. You, look, you've been doing this a long time. You've seen the highs and you've seen the lows. What do you, what, what, what do you take from a game like this going forward, historically and in the present? Well. We came out and didn't tackle very well. We missed so many tackles, and we were on the guy. Now, to their credit, obviously they're back. The Atwater kid, excellent back and all those things, but stuff we hadn't done. But uh, offensively, when you come out totally in inept like that, you know, eventually it wears down your defense. But bottom line is we gave up an inordinate amount of third downs, couldn't get off the field, and that has nothing to do with our offense. So, like I said, we got our butt kicked. It was an implosion in all three phases. And hey, you got to go back and regroup. You got a long season ahead of you, and you haven't played a league game yet. Frank, you've always been gracious. This is not an easy night, but I know if history's any judge, you'll get these kids off the canvas. We'll work at it. You got it, coach. Thank you very much. Thank you. Michael, Gary, tough night uh, at Fisher Stadium, but uh, I know Frank Devani. Uh, I know his passion for the game, and I know that there's a lot of young kids in there uh, that will take a very tough lesson here tonight back to you guys by the same token john you have to look at the schedule lafayette has put together it is not an easy schedule for them they're playing up almost every single week we don't want the fans to get real frustrated give the leopards an opportunity maybe next week six o'clock against wagner when you look at some of the final numbers princeton put up 573 yards of total offense to lafayette's 278 a couple of shining lights. Tyler West did run for uh, 54 yards and just eight carries tonight. Joey Chenoweth had eight catches for 66 yards. Both of those guys are freshmen. As uh, also in the receiving department, you have to like what you saw uh, out of uh, 
number uh, Rocco Palumbo with 32 yards catching the ball, 50 yards by May Merriweather. So uh, it was not a good night, but certainly a few positives. Let's go down to the guys. They'll finish this out. Thanks for watching us. For, uh, for Mike and myself and John Bowman and John Leone, we'll turn it over to Matt, Phil, and Mo. All right, back here, Fisher Stadium, Matt Province, wrapping things up with filling and Maurice Bennett. And remember, the postgame show brought to you by the Maroon Club. Every gift matters every year. Join the Maroon Club today. Really not a whole lot to talk about. You know, obviously, a, a 47 loss isn't the way you wanted to go, but a touchdown, a touchdown with five minutes to go to off in the blow for the offense just to get a little momentum going well just a little bit you know you never want to be blown out and shut out you know so it does I think the other the other small positives that you that you saw was you saw a couple guys a couple younger kids Rashawn Merriweather come in that was a great great uh, catch and, and run and then you also saw Tyler West come in and have some nice runs so that's a few positives you know moving forward Mo I think about this team and Tell me from a player's perspective, what's the most important now? Probably Sunday, you know, because Sunday is the day you come in and you start to get healthy again, right? So, so many injuries out on the field. You know, Sunday is very important. You come in, you watch the game, and you move on mentally to whoever your opponent is the next week. You try and get yourself healthy again by going back to the trainer's room. So, I mean, it has to be Sunday because these guys need as much mental repetition and as much recovery time as possible. Media guys also talk about, you know, leadership in, within the locker room, senior guidance, guys to step up. Uh, how important is that? Again, to us, how is it important for someone to take a role up there and get these guys back emotionally? I mean, look, the way you become a real leader is to lead by example on the football field. You can, you can be a rah-rah, yeller, screamer, but at the end of the day, you need to have results. You need to go out. You need to hit people on defense. You need to execute. You need to be smart. I think they have players that can actually get that done with Jared Roberts and Jared Roberts and a younger guy coming along here, Brandon Bryant. So you definitely have some leadership, but at the end of the day, you have to be productive on the field. That's how you lead a football team. And Phil, you're a competitive guy as well. You've probably suffered losses like this throughout your career at times. Yeah. From a competitor standpoint, I mean, are you excited? Can you get can you get better from this because here tonight? Uh, you definitely do. You know, you want to get better, and you ha uh, absolutely have to put it behind you. And obviously, we've talked about this in years past. It's a, it's a good thing that you kind of have three separate seasons in the Patriot League. You have preseason, you have your regular season, and you always have the Lehigh game. <laughs> and keep in mind, too, and we talked about this in the pregame show, this is not unfamiliar territory. Just two seasons ago, it was a Lafayette team starting 0-3. The result, you know, a, beat, a win over Lehigh, championship ring. So it can certainly happen. Hopefully, again, they'll learn from what the mistakes were today and the younger guys get a little bit more seasoning. Not a whole lot of time to get ready. We're back to action, of course. We won't have the uh, pregame show for you, but Gary and Mike and John, of course, will be up for the next game, which is 6 o'clock at Wagner next week. We'll return home two weeks from now. We've got Fordham, another tough one coming up. So hopefully by then, Patriot League starting, these guys will be brushed up a little bit, ready to go. All right, Phil, thanks again. Thank you. Maurice, always a pleasure, even though he was the big guy today getting out there and doing the special thing with our coach, John Leon. Maybe you're next week. I don't know. I'll, I'll lobby for it, but good job again today as always. Thank you. Always a pleasure. All right, we want to thank the entire crew. Of course, the trio with with uh, Gary, Mike, and John, and back in the truck, Rikuho did a great job for us. Thunder Dan was our human clock tonight. We thank all the, the crew here with RCN. Until two weeks from now, Matt, Matt Province saying so long, a final time for Fisher Stadium. Princeton gets this one 40-7. We'll have you next week here on the Lafayette Sports Network.